Okay, so now that you have downloaded the chat system from the marketplace, you should have a project that looks something like this. This is just the demo project. And you can play around in it and you know make sure it works and everything. Um, see how it works, I guess. Um, but yeah, so we're in this project, and the next step is to integrate the content for the chat into a different project. In my case, I'll just be integrating it into the first person template. So to do that, what you need to do is come down here to the BP chat system folder. You can see you have two other folders, demo content. This is just useless stuff that um, is for demonstration purposes in here. Then you have this blueprints folder, which is everything that is uh, relevant to the chat system. So what I'm going to do is you can look through here. This just contains everything that we need for the chat for it to work properly. Um, and this folder is also what we will be migrating. So what we can do is go ahead and right click on this blueprints folder and click migrate and click OK and browse to wherever you want to migrate to. In my case it will be in my documents, Unreal Projects and chat integration demo and then the content folder. If I click OK it should say content migration completed successfully. Now I can open up that chat integration demo which is my other project that I'm implementing the chat into and make sure that everything migrated properly. Okay, now that we're in here you should look in the content folder and you should have this BP chat system folder and it should have everything that we need just like in the demo project. Now if we play right now we actually won't have the chat spawn and that's what we are going to set up now so that everything spawns and is set up how we want it to be. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to copy and paste a few things into our character blueprint. So locate your character blueprint. In my case, since I'm in the first person template, it is in the it is in here and it's the first person character. Okay, now let's go ahead and find what we need to copy and paste. So go back into the demo uh, project and go into the demo content folder and then go into the demo character and you have all these nodes right here. It's about 15 to 20 of them and those are the nodes you need to copy and paste. So I'll copy the top ones first. If you copy all of them at once probably won't work properly so I'm just going to copy all of them at the top. Just copy. Then in the other project I will just paste. Okay. Now I'll copy the last nodes that we need which are just these bottom four. So I can just copy and paste. Okay. And so go ahead and look down down at the bottom node. You'll see this should be an event begin play. It actually didn't copy properly. That should be event begin play. So I can just replace that. If in your blueprint you already have an event begin play, then you just need to add these three nodes somewhere in there. Okay, and this delay actually should be one second. It will be one on your end, I just forgot to change it on mine. Um, but yeah, now that we've done that, go ahead and compile. And you should receive a bunch of errors. Don't worry, this is easy to fix. Go ahead and right click on this chat system variable, click create variable chat system, then change the replication to be replicated. Now if we compile, the errors should all go away and that's all we need to do for the character. So now go into your project settings and go into maps and modes and change your game instance to chat game instance. Don't worry if your game's already using another game instance I'll show you how to switch over to a different game instance and have it still work. Now if we play the chat should spawn on both players Let's see if we uh, type a message. It appears for both people. And it works great. Okay, so everything's working. Um, now that we are in here, the first thing you'll notice is that, in case you didn't watch the features video that shows off all the features of the chat, I do invite you to check that out. But the first thing you'll notice is at the bottom of the screen we have these two tabs, global and PMs. 
The problem is that we're in an FPS game, so currently we can't click on those tabs because our mouse isn't visible, right? But an easy way for you to switch tabs is using a function that I have set up for you. So in those nodes that we copied and pasted into the character blueprint, within those we had two inputs for the arrow keys. And I can take a look at those now. Right, you'll see that when we press the right arrow key, it calls this previous next tab function to go right, and when we press left, it goes left on the tabs. We can test that out. If I press right arrow key, it goes right. Left arrow key, it goes left. I can switch between tabs. And you'll probably want to change the input. You know, in my case, it turns the character. So you can set up the input however you want. You just want to call these two functions to change your tabs. But that really only applies if you're in an FPS game where you can't click the tabs using your mouse because your mouse isn't visible. Okay? So, now that we've done that, uh, something you're probably wondering is if I type a message, you'll see, you'll see that our characters already have their names set up. And you're probably wondering where our characters got these names from. And the answer to that is simple. To set the character name, all you need to do is set a character variable. I already have mine set up, and I can show you. Go into my chat system blueprint. What I did is I looped through all the characters, and depending on the character's index, I set the name. Okay? Um, you guys actually won't have these nodes. You won't have any of these. These are just on my end just because that's how I decided to set up the character. Um, but on your end, something you'll actually notice, let me just stop this game, is you'll have this variable, player name, in the chat system blueprint. This is the variable you need to set to set the player's name in the chat. Okay, so, like I was saying, you guys don't have any of these nodes. Let me quickly make it so it's just like yours is. Okay, on your guys' end, your blueprint should look something like this in the chat system. And this player name should be editable and exposed on spawn. Okay, now what we can do to set the player name, since it's editable and exposed on spawn, go into your character blueprint and look at the very top where you paste these nodes. And we have spawn actor chat system and player name. So you can input the player name however you'd like. Um, whether it be the player's Steam name, or whatever. Okay, I'll just do test player. Obviously, if I just hard code it like that, well, every player will have the same name. But, for the sake of testing, that'll work out just fine. Okay. So, now that we've done that, um, everything is working in the chat. It's all implemented. Um, but... There's actually one or two things you might uh, be wondering. So, like I was saying, your game may ar have already had a game instance. For example, let's say... Let's say that we have here... Let's say that we have FPS game instance. Okay, let's say that we have that. Um, if you want to use... You know, if you don't want to use the game instance that came with the chat, if you just want to use your games game instance instead, the one that you've always been using before you implemented it, it's actually pretty simple. So go into your game instance, whichever one you want to use, and you want to create a variable. This can be named players in chat. That's what I suggest you name it. This will be an array of chat systems. Okay, and then a new variable. This will be groups. And this will just be an array of strings. Now if we compile, that's all we need to set up in your game instance. Now we need to swap it so that instead of the chat system using the chat's game instance, it uses your game instance, whichever one you want to use. So come into the chat system event graph, go to the top, you should see initialize chat up here. And look for this cast. You should have cast to chat game instance. I'm going to go ahead and replace that with cast to... We're going to use cast to, what is it? It's FPS game instance, which is just your game instance blueprint, whatever it's called. Okay, and then you'll just want to replace this with the old cast. 
Okay. Now you'll see we actually can't connect this up to the variable. So click on this game instance blueprint variable and change that to be your game instance. In my case it's FPS game instance. I can do change variable type and connect that up like so. Okay, now if you compile and save, you'll actually receive some errors. Don't worry about those. Those are really easy to fix. So in our compiler errors, you want to click on the target. And it should bring you down here. What you'll need to do is you should see, it should look something like this. It should be disconnected and then it should have an error. So from the game instance blueprint, you just want to copy whatever this is. So in my case, it's get players in chat. Right, so we just want to get the same thing, then replace it, and move it up. Then for the next one, it's up here. We just need to do get chat groups, because that's what we need to replace. So get chat, I guess get groups. I guess I should have named it chat groups. Sorry, there's a jet flying by. Okay. Those should be the only two errors you'll get. If there are more, you just do the same thing, you just replace it. And I'm actually going to quickly rename this. Actually, should be named chat groups, not just groups. So it's a little bit more obvious of what it does. Okay, now it's compile and save. And so that's not all. If we try to play right now, we'll actually receive an error um, in chat FL. So let's go ahead and check that out. So chat FL is right here. So if we compile, you'll see there are a couple of errors. Let's do the exact same thing we just did for this. So click on the target. Should bring you down here to the error. So the error is for chat groups. So we need to do get chat groups. And then swap that out. Like so. For the next error, same thing. Uh, in this case we have two of them, we have players in chat, so we can do get players in chat, and then replace that, and then get chat groups, and then just replace that. Okay, now if we save and compile, that should be all. Let's go ahead and make sure we're using our real, our actual game instance. So yes, we are using FPS game instance. Now let's go ahead and test it. So if you play the game, the chat should spawn on both clients, or on the client and lead server. This will also work in dedicated server mode. But we can type a message, and it should appear for both players. Now you'll notice both players have the same name, because we did hard code that in, in here. We did player name test player, but that's really not an issue. Okay, now this video is getting kind of long, so I do want to wrap it up. But something you're probably wondering is, you know, when does our where when and where does our chat when does this spawn, and what if we want to hide it or despawn it or whatever? So, um. As far as hiding it goes, there's actually a built-in auto-hide function that uh, you'll see in a second here. I have it set to like 20 seconds before auto-hides um, when there's inactivity in the chat. But yeah, so as you can see, it has auto-hidden. But obviously, you may want to despawn this or whatever. Um, essentially, what we have here is in our chat system blueprint on event begin play we call this spawn chat function. It just spawns the HUD widget for the chat and then adds it to the viewport. Um, and then adds the player to the chat and then creates the global and PMs group and all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, so, you know, a lot of this stuff is very easy to customize. Um, yeah, and I guess something you're probably wondering as well is, you know, you're spawning this HUD widget blueprint, but I already have a HUD widget that I want to use. Well, the thing with that is that the fact that the chat has its own HUD widget really isn't a problem. Uh, there are no conflicts or anything. I mean, you can, really all the HUD widget is, 
is it's just for us to be able to position the chat how we want. And so, I mean, you can go in here, you can spawn it however you want, but yeah, having this HUD widget really isn't a problem. Um, you can change it so it uses a different HUD widget. I won't get into that just because it does take a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, so very easy to customize. I suggest that you go in and look at stuff. So let me quickly show you everything you can customize just very briefly. So you can go into this chat. Well, you can go, so you have these. Okay, uh, so let me start over. So you can go through every one of these little widgets and all that, and then you can go into the graph. And you should, in the variables, you should have the back end category and possibly a customization category if it's something you can customize. So chat dialog box doesn't have anything we can customize, so we can close out of that. Let's try chat message. Okay, so chat message has the customization category. We can customize the username color and the message color. Uh, chat tab. There's actually quite a few things in the chat tab. We have notification text color. All this stuff that you can play around with and you know, get the get it how you want it to be. In chat FL, we have tons of stuff we can customize. All these error messages um, and all of these, like the word sensor. If you want to add things to the word sensor, I can add the word hack. And now, if I try to type the word hack in the place, it'll actually censor it out. All right, so works very well. Um, obviously you'll see that chat is pretty small because I just resized it. Um, but yeah, there's tons of stuff you can customize, tons of stuff you can do. As you can see, implementation is pretty simple. And that's going to be about it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment, and thanks for watching.